Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tosin for this that new here. I know from the title of this video, this topic um, may be a bit um, sensitive, not controversial, sensitive. But you know, I just thought, I just, I just, I just had an impression on my heart to do this video basically. So I'm going to be doing this video from the most um, neutral standpoint and also from clearly from the word of God, no emotions attached. And hopefully that this video, someone finds it useful for today for tomorrow for 20 years to come if youtube still exists and yes basically that's it so if you'd love to know more about this topic definitely keep watching okay okay now um what do you would do as a believer when you know someone that you honor or someone that you place in a position of um respect or you place on a pedestal of holiness makes a mistake or they don't make the most expedient decision or they fall into outright sin and um, what do you do as a believer? I know that the first answer that probably comes to your mind is, you know, we have to pray for them. So yes, which is definitely, you definitely need to pray for them. Even unbelievers were praying for them. How much more, you know, people that are the members of the body of Christ. Now, but what happens between the, the season in which you are praying for them, in the season where they are under castigation, in the season where whatever they did that is inexperienced to you or to even to God, or to the general public is being discussed you know everywhere on social media within the church within your fellowships on your dining table with your cousins and your sisters what do you how do we handle it in that regard i'm going to break down this topic and i hope that um as i'm speaking you definitely understand what i'm saying first things first when you put someone or when we when we put people in a position of you know leadership or put them and you know specifically when we say men of god women of god or even your your friend that is born again let me put it that way someone that you respect someone that you honor someone that you believe that you know they or someone that proclaims that they are part of the body of christ they proclaim that they are born again christians i think that's what is more important for me when someone who isn't a believer or who doesn't identify with you know the body of christ makes a mistake you know sometimes it seems a bit excusable you know, pardon my choice of word, because, you know, they don't, they, as I said, they don't identify with the body of Christ. They don't have knowledge in that regard. So you can't hold them up to anything because they haven't professed or proclaimed any level of piety or they've not said that, you know, that they are born again. They don't say that they believe in Jesus Christ. But speaking about the body of Christ, we need to understand as believers that there is leadership in the body of Christ, right? So in as much as um, we are all members of one body in Christ Jesus, there's definitely, there's definitely the leadership. That's why we have pastors, we have apostles, we have evangelists, we have self-fellowship leaders, like I mentioned, we have, you know, branch coordinators, and this is just because of accountability. Now, some people are specifically called, you know, to set up, you know, new churches, like apostles, they are planters, or um, pastors, which have been called by God to, um, to disciple a, uh, a crowd or a certain amount of people, basically like your pastor, just to help you, you know, grow in the things of God and grow with the knowledge of God. Now, we do, as I said earlier, you do need to acknowledge that these people are your leaders. They're your spiritual leaders. Now, that doesn't negate the sense of responsibility that you yourself as a believer has, which is, as I said, I have a video I talked about, um, your belie a believer's mandate, which is besides, after accepting Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior, you have a responsibility to love, you have a responsibility to evangelize, you have a responsibility to give help, you have a responsibility to do so many things. And I did that video many years ago, but it's backed with the word of God. So I would recommend that you watch that video on the believer's mandate you know the bible says you know go into the world and you know share the gospel that's the mandate of every believer not just your pastors so once you have an assignment that there's leadership there's definitely a sense of accountability you have with those people so let's say a youth coordinator now is being called out for let me even say homosexuality or is being called out for premarital sex or is being called out for um, mismanagement of funds or she's being called out for mismanagement of funds or anything you know negative these people as long as they proclaim to be born again christians as long as they proclaim to be members of the body of christ they are christians and their past fruits have been showing that they are christians and they made an error now, some of them are a victim of habits. I'm not talking about those ones that, you know, maybe repetitively, they're always stealing in all the branches they go to. Those ones, they are a weed. We need to pluck them out after putting rehabilitation methods for them to, um, strategies for them to do better. If they don't do better, they need to be plucked out. If not, they'll corrupt the remaining flock. Yeah, not those people. Let's say people that, you know, they've had a 
clean track record for lack of a better um, word because you know it's only God that knows who is clean and who is not clean but you know from what we can see the Bible says by their fruits we shall know them so from what from the fruits that we could see and then they fall they make a mistake they cheat on their wives they cheat on their husbands or they something happened to them now your first response as a believer is prayer and prayer for who prayer for the person and I'm going to come to why um, the prayer for the person, prayer for the body of Christ. A lot of people, unfortunately, either we want to accept it or not, a lot of people are just face value Christians. They are only Christians because of a person, not because of Christ. So what happens is that when someone that they revere or they put in high authority falls, they too, their faith is shaken. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like they stop going to church because their pastor was accused of molesting a child or a minor. So they don't go to church anymore. Um... Their general overseer was caught, you know, involved in financial fraud, so they stopped giving their tithe. People like that are fickle Christians. They don't understand the fundamentals of why they're fellowshipping with, with, um, with, um, with brethren. They don't understand the, 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 the principle beside, behind giving your tithe. And I did not say paying. I said giving your tithe. You're not paying anybody. You're giving your tithe. You know, people like that, they don't have an understanding. So we have to pray for the body of Christ. So that because of this person's, you know, mistake or error or sin... People like that don't fall away from, you know, from the gospel and they don't fall into the world too. Thirdly, we have to pray for the families of these people that are involved. Um, we have to pray that, you know, there are cases, cases of infidelities, that God will keep their wives, you know, God will comfort them. Especially maybe when it's something that is really shameful. Imagine maybe a pastor being accused of rape. We have to pray for the wives, even if some of them may seem like accomplices to the offense. You have to respond in prayer. And that's, a, that's, that's the third pe person you have to pray for. So I said three, pe three things. I'm going to list them on the screen. Now, why do we pray for these people? Because we have to see them as fallen soldiers, not the enemy. And they are fallen soldiers. It's like when you're going in a battle and you're in a battalion, if one of your team teammates or team member falls down, you don't now take a gun and then you shoot them when the person is down. You don't do that because why? The person is part of your family. The person only fell. So we have an understanding of that. When you hear men of God or women of God, you know, even when they make clear mistakes, and you be like, what's this one saying? This one not read their Bible. Exactly. As a scenarios where it's vivid that this person has heard, as an E-R-R-E-D, your first response is to pray for them. Because why? They are members of the body of Christ. And guess what? Either we like it or not, if one pastor falls, it affects the entire body of Christ. You cannot say, oh, me and Pentecostal, it only happens to people that attend them. Um, Baptist. No, we are all members of the body of Christ as long as we believe in Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. So that's one. The first response is prayer. Second rep response is to watch the fruit of your lips. It's so easy to pass commentary. It's so easy to be to say, ah, bas boast, finish them. It's so easy to to say things. And let me know. Um, see, I'm pro accountability. I'm the kind of person that I believe that when someone has made a mistake, they need to be brought in. They need to confess of their sins. They need to ask for forgiveness. We need to accept the apology. We need to forgive them. Rehabilitation needs to be put in place so that the person can do better and they don't do that again. The purpose of bringing them in is to restore them back to the faith, not to cast them to the swine. That's not what we're trying to do. We're so I'm pro accountability. In the cases where it's the case of um, maybe legal system, maybe the person raped a minor, they all raped anybody, not even the minor, anybody, you know, rape is a, is a crime. In every part of the world is a crime. I believe that the person should be jailed. Do you understand? I believe that the justice should take its full course. And, you know, the thing about, I'm going to go to that later. I was going to talk about anointing or when someone is anointed. It doesn't mean they will not make mistakes, you know? So I'm going to talk about that later. So I believe that they should go to jail. I believe justice should take its full course. But more important for me is their salvation. My prayer is that if they die today, they should make heaven because there's always hope as long as there's life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Look at the Bible. The thief on the cross gave, went to heaven, asked Jesus to be with him in paradise on his day of death. This man was known as a thief all his life. Or, well, from what the Bible told us. It was, the Bible even called him the thief on the cross. We don't know his name. But guess what? On that last moment, on that dying hour, he still had an opportunity. So you can understand that even with, the, even with Jesus when he was on earth, Everybody has a chance. As long as the person is still alive, they have an opportunity to have salvation. They have an opportunity to be restored. There's an opportunity of repentance. 
you know it's after death that there's no need to pray for the person's soul because just justice is already as in judgment is going to take place anyway because the person is already dead all the prayers I want to pray is while the person is alive. You need to watch the fruit of our lips. You need to be very careful of commentary. You know, I tell people that silence and self-control is the gift that God has given we as believers that is going to save us from a lot of temptation. It's going to save us from a lot of sin. It's going to save us from not being in the snare of Satan. It's so easy for us to throw this face and say, you know, thou shalt not judge. You know, remove the log in your eye first before you remove the speck in someone's eye. We forget that the Bible says the same way the same measure in which you judge other people is the way we are going to be judged. Do you understand what I'm saying? And this is in no way so that someone doesn't hear another thing that I'm not saying and I'm not saying. This is in no way to make excuses for bad behavior. This what I'm just saying is we have to be careful when we're giving commentary. As I said, you can give commentary. Maybe God has placed you in a position of influence where let me say you have a flock or you have a following that you know that you giving an opinion about this would help people to have a better understanding of the situation. By the leadership of the Holy Spirit with all wisdom. You can express how justice should be served alongside showing and you know sharing the love of Christ, correcting with the love of Christ, expecting justice with the love of Christ. In fact, even expecting justice is out of love for that person so that the person can do better. It's like someone that does not discipline their child, you're leading them to hell. Basically, that's just what it is. You have to be careful not to speak about things that you don't fully understand. You know, the other day I was watching a TV program. I watch a lot of crime shows and a family was accused of... Um, some grave, you know, crimes against minors. And, you know, these people were witch hunted by their citizen American family. If I remember, I think it's the circus family. I think that's the name of their family. I'm not sure. Anyway, they were humiliated. In fact, they slept in jail for like a few weeks or something like that. And they actually were acquitted. These people were not guilty. Someone actually just made a story about it. So, so there, are, there are instances where it's just fabricated lies that you would have wanted to go and run to go and say, you know, nail him, nail him, nail him, stone him, stone him, stone him. Like the story in the Bible about the, the adulterous woman and people were quick to cast a stone and, the, and Jesus said if you know you are without sin be the first to cast a stone now I think I said it in my what exactly is judging video if you haven't watched that please do watch that I think it's also a great watch Jesus did not say that you know yeah what she did was right he only said that if you know you haven't sinned before be the first to cast a stone and Jesus told her go and sin no more with the with the message of Christ Christ is more is more um, concerned about repentance is more concerned about rehabilitation. So if as a believer, you hear these things, your prior focus is to be about the soul of that person, the salvation of that person. Not necessarily, um, it has, as I said, alongside you know, expecting justice in cases of, you know, when it's legal. You know, some things that are immoral, but they are not a crime. Yeah, so they're immoral, but they're not federal crimes. So when they're immoral, that's between maybe say, whatever spell of, spell of influence for that case to be solved. In those kind of scenarios, you have to be so, so careful. You don't go and talk. I'm going to give you a biblical example. So who can remember in the Bible when, you know, Moses was giving leadership over the children of Israel. And he went to go and marry the Ethiopian woman. And you remember in the Bible, you know, they had a lot of, um, what would I say, warnings from God. that You know, don't marry from the Midianites. Don't marry the Amorites woman, like in the case of Samson. Don't, and then Moses went to marry the Ethiopian woman. And the Bible said Miriam and Aaron, they came together. And Miriam was spearheading that conversation. If you read the Bible, you see that her name was always called first. And she actually even questioned Moses' leadership. She said, is it the only one that heard God? Haven't we all of us not also heard God or something like that? And do you know what happened? She was cursed with leprosy instantly. Now, the Bible did not say that, you know, Moses marrying an Ethiopian man, woman, rather, was right. The Bible did not say that, yeah, Jesus was like, kudos Moses, or God was like, kudos Moses. No, the Bible did not say that. But because Miriam opened her mouth, what happened to her in the Bible? She was cursed with leprosy. Who can remember when King David's wife too, when he was dancing and praising God, and then his wife Micah, I think it's Micah, and she 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 laughed at him. She was she mocked him. She was like, ah, why would a king be dancing like this and all of that? And guess what? She's the only woman in the Bible that was recorded to be barren for the rest of her life. So we are, as we as believers, not necessarily, you know, the mercy of God is so real and it's so rich. Doesn't mean that we should not provoke. You know, judgment or not, because of a careless statement. So look at the examples I've given. Doesn't mean that whatever the person doing is right. Just, uh, just be careful. Make sure that anything that comes out of your mouth is from the place of understanding, is a place of wisdom, and is a place that if you were the one that did that offense, because the Bible says, "Do unto others as you want others to do unto you." Go to room, love your neighbor as thyself. That's scripture. I want you to take it literally. If it was you, or if it was your brother or your father that did that because nobody is the bible says he that thinks it stands 
let him be careful lest they fall. So nobody is above, you know, falling to sin. It's just the mercy of God and the Holy Spirit that is keeping us righteous. Do you understand what I'm saying? If it was you, how would you want people to speak about you when you make a mistake? So that's one thing I want you to consider, the fruits of your lips. Now, the third thing I want you to consider, you know, when um, someone, you know, that you honor, that you respect falls after um, praying for them um, is to be passionate about their restoration. Now, if it's someone that is in your circle of influence, let's say maybe, as I said, your self-fellowship leader, it's in your place as a believer to speak with other like-minded people to say, okay, how can we help this person back? You know, let's say your friend cheated on her husband, right? Or slept with the local pastor. Let me give you a very cliche example. And so her husband is raging and everything that, you know, she's packed out her things because the husband said he's not interested. The entire house has fallen upside down because she was adulterous. You as a believer, it's your responsibility. And I say, you know, think issues like that are very sensitive because you may not want to, you know, put your mouth, you want to mind your business. But the Bible says that, well, as believers, we are all members of one body in Christ. We are helping each other up. It's your place as a believer to speak with whoever is in control or like-minded Christians. So think of strategies. Are you guys going to pay for the person to attend counseling? If the person, let's say, is a drug addict, are you all going to gather resources together to ensure that the person goes into a correctional facility or what's a rehabilitation facility like a rehab center? It's not just for you to just be going and be gossiping and say, oh, did you hear that? Pastor's daughter is now a drug addict. Hello? That's not your place. That is not your place. Your place is to help the person to be restored back into the faith and to be all God has called that person to be. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. And so we are, we, are, we are believers not just to say, yay, we are Christians. We are believers to prune one another. We are believers to help one another when everybody else is against us. And this could be your own child as well. It's not now time for you to kick them to the curb. It's time for you to think of ways in which they can be rehabilitated. So that's the third thing I want you to do when someone that you honor. And if it's, let me say, like your daddy geo of your church, like general overseer for those that don't understand that abbreviation, you can write a letter. You can think. God has given us wisdom as believers. So think of ways in which, okay, how this matter can be solved. You can write a letter and hope that, you know, the Holy Spirit helps that letter to go to the people that it needs to go so that the person can be corrected and things can get better. You know? So that's that. Another thing I want us to, you know, to also be careful of is um, <laughs> remember that the pedestal that you put these people is also expected of you as a believer. And you are not an accuser of the brethren. Only Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Only Satan is the one that, you know, um, is very quick to, what's the English word? Lay accusations. Only Satan will say, oh, you this, you this, you that. There's a video I did. It's titled um, in the past, I think is. Um, I can't remember the title, however, something about, you know, do not be an accuser of the brethren or your responsibility to other believers or something like that. I'll put it here as well. And see, Satan is, where, is the only person that when you sin, he glories in that sin. Do you understand? That should not be your place as a believer. You should not say, eh -heh, I talk him. When someone, you know, when you hear that this person maybe makes a mistake, don't say, I knew this or just something about this woman. Don't, don't be that person. Don't, don't be, don't, the Bible says he hates a fit that is swift to run into evil. That is in Proverbs. I'm going to put the scripture here as well. As well, don't be that Christian that you glory in the downfall of another believer. Don't be that Christian that when someone makes a mistake, you say, eh, hey, I knew it. The man was too dapper. It's only a matter of time. She was too this. She was too that. I knew it. People don't really change. This or this or this or like, come on. Only Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Don't make yourself that person. Don't make yourself an antagonist to the body of Christ. Don't perverse what the word of God says about restoring people to the faith when they make mistakes. Do you understand what I'm saying? As I said, alongside, you know, expecting justice, ensure that you do it with the utmost love of God, with the love of Christ. Because the Bible says, you, you can be so anointed, but you have no love. It's nothing. Just, do you understand? So that's one thing I also want you to, you know, is worthy of notes, so that you don't make yourself a champion to evil. You know, a champion to someone that, eh, hey, you are the biggest commentator when you're not a gossip blog. But the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So that's that. Now, another thing while, while what you want to do when someone that you honor and respect is for you to study scriptures on that matter. And the reason is a great level of disappointment and heartbreak actually comes with when someone that we love so much, you know, does something bad. Just imagine, let's say when you something very cliche, let's say your favorite YouTuber now, you know, someone that you watch on YouTube so much. I have my own favorites as well. And maybe you hear that maybe they were accused of fraud or something so mundane you know it, you are so disappointed you are or maybe the person committed suicide you are just so you don't you don't you don't understand what you should do in that moment is actually to take the word take the word of god and begin to search for understanding 
you know, look for scriptures that comfort you as well. Because even you yourself, that as I said, there's a le level of heartbreak. I'm going to give you a very realistic example. And I'm going to try and hide the names of the people that are involved. One man of God last year, I've, is it last year? I think it was last year, committed suicide. And you guys, I took it so personal. Like, I cried so much. You would think that maybe he's my own pastor. It really broke my heart. Like, I was just like, oh Jesus, why? Like, I was thinking about his children. I was saying that, oh God, I pray that, you know, when they grow older and they, you know, begin to maybe read the news and they know, have a better understanding of what happened. They don't now say, oh, my father served the Lord all his life and yet he still committed suicide and then they now leave the faith. You know, things like that. I was just so concerned. And, I, you know, people were... I got a lot of messages even from my friends I knew about it. They were like, oh my God, like, you know, will he go to heaven? Will he go to hell? You know, they say that suicide is a mental health problem. Was the person really aware of what they were doing? Da -da 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 -da. Was the person selfish, you know, to take their own life? Or they've gotten to a point where they have no sense of, um, they cannot, um, what's the word? They cannot actually fully grasp what they are doing. So to them, they're not being selfish. You know, there's so many schools of thought when it comes to this topic. So I said, you know what? To thyself be true to some, I carried the Bible that day and I began to search scriptures and I meditated as in I cried and then I was in the bathroom and I was having a shower and the Holy Spirit ministered one song to me, my life is not my own, to you I belong, I give myself, I give myself to you and I sang, I've, I know that song from, and I, I sang that song over and over again, I went on YouTube, I played that song and I had a better understanding of the situation. And all in that moment, I just had to just pray that, you know, that in his dying moments, that maybe God just had mercy on him. And I gave the example, for example, like beef on, this, on the cross. You know, so that was just how I dealt with that situation. So as a believer, as I said, you too, you have a certain level of um, expectation. Because we are human, we God put those feelings in our, in our body for a reason. You have a certain level of expectation. And so that you too don't go and err in the faith. You know, sometimes when you love someone so much, you begin to excuse their bad behavior. Or when you love someone so much, you begin to try to make excuses for things that are explicit in the Bible. The Bible says, you know, like for example now, um, maybe that shall not covet your neighbor's wife, for example. And then you now begin to make example, oh, but it's this childhood sweetheart, they now met again, they now fell in love. You know, it's very easy to make those ex excuses when we love and we respect people. So you have to study the word of God so that your faith is on solid ground. The Bible says, looking up to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, not your pastor, not me that I'm even saying this video, not your favorite woman that preaches on the internet, not your favorite man that, you know, speaks on conferences. Looking up to Jesus, because only Jesus is a full example of someone that was in flesh and was without sin. You know, it's only Jesus that died for you. I didn't die for your sins. I, can, I didn't have the capacity to. If I die for your sins, I die for nothing. <laughs> Do you understand? So yeah, you have to study the word as well so that, you know, you are encouraged. The Bible says that the word of God is, is what? It's a double-edged sword. It's useful for reproof. It's useful for understanding. It's useful for correction. So you need to study the word to have a better understanding of the situation. To keep yourself on God. The Bible says the word of God is the sword of the spirit. So that you yourself, you don't now become a slave to sin or you unconsciously fall into the dangers of joining someone to find into flip someone's sinful ways or someone's inexpedient ways, you know? So that's one thing I want you to do. Also study the word of God. So basically, those are four things that I think you should do or we should or I should do when someone you honor, when someone you love, when they make a mistake, when they fall. Remember... They are soldiers. We are mandated by the word of God to see people how Christ sees them. And every soul, God sees them as a potential, you know, saint. Like someone that when they go to heaven, they can go to heaven. Because when there's life, there's hope. God sees them the way he made them. I know the Bible do also does say that, you know, because people have refused to acknowledge his ways, he has given them to reprobate in mind. But there's still opportunity for salvation. So please, I want you to be very careful. Respond in prayer. Respond in love. Respond how you want to be treated if it was you. Respond in wisdom. Respond with the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Respond with silence. Take advantage of silence. Respond with studying the word of God with the sword of the Spirit. And restore, um, respond with, you know, mobilizing strategies to help the person to be restored back to the faith. So yeah, that's the end of my video. I really hope that this video blesses you. I hope that um, you were able to gain one or two things from this video. Please leave me comments in the comment section below. Anything that is on your mind that you want to share. And if this video was helpful to you, please share. Make sure you like so that other people can watch and also be blessed. Um, yeah, that's about it. Until next time, stay blessed. Bye-bye.